Because if you've got a rocket ship and that rocket ship is even like, uh, it's not going on the intended path, even if it's one or two degrees off, that's the difference between you going to the moon and you going to forget Pluto. This is Secrets for Success. Welcome to the Secrets for Success podcast. I'm your host, Greg Todd. Thank you as always for joining me, our friends. This one, I want to talk about the power of challenges, of doing events, because we have done, we have brought in this year um, over uh, 3,800 leads uh, at over half a million dollars in 10 days by doing uh, two challenges. And in 2020, we brought in a half a million dollars and over 800 new leads by doing a challenge. And there was one common denominator in both of them. And that was that you were the orchestrator behind them. So this episode, what I want to do is I just want to talk about challenges and why they are so important, uh, why you believe a lot of people should be using them. And then if you want to me break down what we did in our challenges. So thank you so much for being on the podcast again. I appreciate it. Pleasure. Awesome. So why don't you, um, count here, let's do this. Why don't I start and I'll kind of tell people where I was in the beginning of this year in 2023. Uh, and I reached out to you, uh, to help you with this. And then let's get tactical today and talk about some of the things that we were able to do going into uh, making this year so successful with really like blowing up this mission. So in the beginning of the year, I was kind of on the struggle bus, honestly. And I was in this situation to where I wanted to keep Smart Success Healthcare going. Uh, and I really wanted to grow the mission. But at the same time, I was having other family responsibilities with Carrie not feeling well and knowing that I needed to devote more time to what was going on at home. And I knew that I needed help. And I knew I, I used that it wasn't what I needed to learn or what I needed to learn or, or, or what new thing I needed to learn. It was who did I need to bring on. And so the who for me was you. And we had already had a lot of success with a prior challenge that we did in 2020. And we did a 21 day challenge right then, which led to like 500 new customers and, and then to have a half a million dollar program that we sold on the back end of that. Uh, and then in this year, I was like, okay, let's, let's see if we could try this again. So I brought you in and we did a five day challenge, right? And so it was called the Invincible Challenge. And from that challenge, we brought in 50, over 1,500 leads. Uh, it led to $330,000 in revenue, which then led to me having a really big event, which has doubled the Smart Success Healthcare mission. Uh, and all of it really came from this one child. So my first question to you is this, who do you think challenges are for? I think challenges for anyone, anyone that's trying to bring in a bunch of leads, um, uh, anyone that's trying to bring in a bunch of clients. I think, I think challenges are for everyone, but I, I don't think that most people really understand how they're supposed to execute the challenge and what's really the, the purpose of the challenge. Okay. So let's talk first about what would you say is the purpose of the challenge and how they should kind of look at it, like the perspective they need to be coming into it with. So I think that challenge is the, the purpose of the challenge, especially if you're an up and coming coach is for you to display your skills or your expertise to your, um, to your audience and show them what you're able to do, show them what it's like to work with you for a few days. And then, you know, if you've given the people a great experience, then um, at the end of the few days, they'll want to take it to the next level with you. Okay. So you said coach, but you also said 
show them what it's like to work with you and show your skills and your knowledge and your expertise. I have a lot of people that are in the healthcare space and they are quote unquote experts in their field, whether they are physical therapists, occupational therapists, dietitians, chiropractors, et cetera. Do you believe that they could do challenges as well? Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So they're trying to get a bunch of leads. They're trying to get people to test, taste test what it's like to work with them. And the way that people in my industry, in the healthcare industry, typically do that is by doing it one-on-one. Like, hey, do a complimentary session with me. Hey, do a 20-minute, but it's one-to-one, so it's not scalable. But a challenge, you have to bring in a lot of people at just one particular time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's kind of talk about um, what we did. So we did a five-day event where it allowed us to work with lots of people at one time. And basically the majority of the people were brand new people into our world. And by the end of it, over a hundred people decided to actually pay me money to continue to work with them. Um, So there were a few different things that you have actually shared, not only with me because you did it with me, but You've shared with the mastermind group we're a part of, which um, which is a group of very high level marketers, uh, you know, in the coaching consulting agency space. So some of the things that that you shared with them on what made our child successful is number one, give yourself the time. So why don't you talk about that first? So I think a lot of people try to rush through the challenges. Um, they just kind of slap it together. And if you want it to be effective, you really have to plan this thing out and give yourself enough time for you to execute everything that 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 you're going to do. And I think that, you know, one of the, the first things. So when you I, I never forget, I was um, I was in Las Vegas and I was walking through the um, the food court of the Venetian when you had asked me to come on and 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 really uh it was that was the end of um January because it was in Las Vegas for a conference. And you know, I had told myself that I wasn't gonna work with anybody. Like I had a couple of people that were paying me a good amount of money uh, that had me on retainer. Um and I was doing that where I really didn't have to do any work. They just called and asked me questions and I would answer them and they would pay me, you know, a decent amount of money every month for that. And I really wasn't interested in working with anyone at the time. And then when you um, reached out to me, um, it was the first time that you had reached out to me like that. Like I could tell from, you know, you were explaining to me the situation and um, I could tell that you really needed the help, you know, in my opinion. Um, and And even from the fact of, um, you made an offer to me and then the offer that you've made was very fair. I, I, I consider, and you, and, and even after you said, listen, um, this is what I like to offer you, but if, if it's not enough, let me know and I'll give you more. <laughs> and I wasn't even like a great negotiation tactic. And I, you know, if I wanted to, I think I could have beat you on a more, you know. But I was like, nah, you know, that's fair. I'm, I, I try to be a very fair person. Uh, I mean, we all in, think in our heads that we are fair, but I, you know, I, I, I was like, yeah, nah, that's fair. I was like, I'm not even. I, I knew I could have got you for another ten percent or fifteen percent or whatever. Um, but I was like, nah, nah, that's cool, you know. And I think it was the way that you came at me, and I could just really tell that um you really needed help um because you you know like the stuff that you had talked about with your family you know and um I just felt really compelled to do it I didn't have to financially or whatever but um I was just like you know what I want to do this I want to help him because you know he not like he's doing it for selfish reasons He, he wants to be able to spend more time with his wife as he's going through, um, you know, these issues, as she's going through these issues. 
And I was like, you know what? Yeah, let's do it. But the first thing I said, you had told me the, the date. And I was like, no, we need to push it back. We need to give ourselves some more time. Right. And um, and we pushed it back as far as we could because you had some other things that you, you, you wouldn't be able to push it back, you know. So, so that was the first thing that we did was we made sure that we gave ourselves enough time to implement everything that we wanted to get. I, I think that's one of the biggest things, you guys. If you want to um, if you want to build a vehicle that's going to allow you to be able to uh, impact a lot of people and do it in a condensed amount of time, you've got to build a vehicle right. If you are building a bike, okay, and you kind of half-ass it with the bike, it gets... It, it, the wheel might be a little wobbly and it, and, it, and it might not be so bad because it's a bike and it doesn't really go fast anyways. But if you're building a rocket ship, you can't mess up on, like you have very little room for error. So you want to give yourself enough time to actually build the vehicle properly so that when you ignite it to take off, it will take off. And I think that was one of the biggest things that we did differently than in any of the other challenges that I did without my brother. And by the way, just for context, I had done four challenges prior without end, and I had no challenge that had more than 150 people sign up. They were all paid, by the way, um, anywhere between a dollar up to $300. This one, uh, it was a free component, but it also had a VIP and a platinum VIP. So let's talk about that. There's like 13 different things. I just want to hit like four or five on today's podcast. And 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 let me and let me just add one more thing to the you know um to the analogy that you just gave as far as a rocket ship. You know, uh, everything has to be precise because if you've got a rocket ship and that rocket ship is even like uh, it's not going on the intended path, even if it's one or two degrees off. That's the difference between you going to the moon and you going to friggin' Pluto, right? You see what I'm saying? One or two degrees is you going to friggin' Pluto or Neptune or one of these other planets versus the moon, right? So right. everything really has to be dialed in and precise if you want it to take you to where it is that you want to go. Right. Yeah. Makes so much sense. The first four challenges that I did, I made them the 97 bucks to come into the challenge and Two hundred and ninety-seven dollars if they wanted to do a uh, uh, VIP option. Uh, this challenge we did it free, and then we did a ninety-seven dollar VIP and then a hundred, a two hundred and ninety-seven dollar platinum VIP or hundred one ninety seven platinum VIP. Can you explain why you believe free having a free option is better than having it just paid? So I think that with free, right, you're giving people an opportunity that um, that may not know you, um, kind of like a um, a way for them to get to know you without them taking any risk. You know, yeah. I think there was a time period where you could have done um, um, just paid, but especially with the fact that there's so many people doing challenges, there's a lot more people doing challenges now. You know, you really want to give people an opportunity to come in and experience you without them taking a risk, you know? So, um, and then if you do what you're supposed to do, you'll get a lot of those free people to upgrade, even if they don't buy the VIP or VIP, um, platinum VIP option in the beginning, between the, the time that they sign up and the time that the challenge is ready to go, you, you you give them a bunch of opportunities that they can upgrade. Let's talk about that. Because when we start the challenge, just to give you guys some of the backstory to it, we have about 1,200 people sign up by day one, okay? And we're going to talk about how we got people to sign up and the ad strategy that we use and our affiliate strategy, et cetera, et cetera. But one of the things is that I think we had about 30 to 35 people sign up for VIP before the challenge started on day one. By the end of the challenge, we had 145 people sign up for VIP. 
So what happened was this, all the people that were there for free that were enjoying the challenge realized that they wanted access to the material in the challenge even after the challenge is over. Or they might have missed 30 minutes one day, or they might have missed an hour, or they might have missed one day totally. So as the challenge was going on, we were getting more and more people sign up for VIP at Platinum VIP because the content was actually really good and they didn't want to miss out on those things. So one of the big things, the experience was good too. The experience was good. And so one of the things that we do in our, our VIP is we give them additional time with me after the main session is over each day. So in the main session, I would go, I, I go for about an hour to hour, 50 minutes, and then I give them an hour to be able to process everything that they learned and ask me and any of the guest speakers that I have questions. What are some other things that we did in the VIP that made it very valuable to people? I think at the end of the day, I just heard somebody say this um, this quote. Um, you have to make it more expensive for people. Actually, it's um, Jason Flatland. That's what it was. Um, and I've heard him say it multiple times, but I just heard it yesterday, so it's top of mind. But you got to make it more expensive for them not to take that option than than it is to take that on shit. Yeah. And there's so many people they get caught up in price and whatnot, whether it's for VIP, whether it's for their coaching programs. And to me, price is the least, right? What you need to focus on is the value, you know? Right. And and people, it becomes easy for people to say like, oh, um, you know, my client, my people can't afford it. People can afford whatever they want, Lord, right? And and going back to what I just said, you've got to make it more expensive for them to not take the option than it is for them to take it. So right. for instance, let's say I, I, I say, okay, Greg, I have a, um, I want to give you this Kia Sorento right now for free. You get it, brand new 2023 Kia Sorento for free. Or I can give you this brand new 2023 Rolls Royce Cullinan for 75K. Which one are you taking? You got to take the Rolls Royce, right? Because right. yeah. that Cullinan brand new is 500K. Right. So, um, and then while the Kia, you could have got it for free. What does the Kia cost? 20, 30K? Right. If, if that, right? So you're going to, you'll find that 75K to right. buy that Rolls Royce because it's so much of a better value. Right. And that's the way that, that, that I look at even when you're presenting offers. You got to give that. You got to offer a person so much that the money that they're paying you is minuscule compared to the value that you're giving them. Okay, so guys, the way that we're setting this up right now is we we talked about the power of challenges is why we feel like challenges is a great way to kill multiple birds with one stone, bring in massive value to people that don't know you, uh, to be able to move people quite fast into becoming from a prospect to actually a potential customer or becoming a customer. So what we did is we started off with the offer of what we were presenting to people. And we started off with the, the power of doing free and then giving people the option to upgrade. And by the way, I've done them both. Free with the option to upgrade is much better than paid and the option to upgrade from paid. Give If your stuff is good and you've got valuable stuff, then the people will eventually pay. They just have to trust you a bit more. Okay. So I think that's, that's really important. So that's the offer. Okay. Let's now talk about how we actually got people into the challenge. Right. And so we did a couple of things. We did some organic, but we did a lot of paid and we did a lot of affiliates. So can you talk a little bit about the paid first and what your strategy was that you did so that we could stick out to people? Uh, so the first thing was like making a bunch of content that, um, and, and the ads that we were running, they didn't look like your traditional paid ads, right? Um, there had been a uh, video style that I had personally been doing 
only because I told a couple of my customers to do it and they weren't listening. So a lot of times, a lot of things that I'll do, I'll just do it just to show them that it works. So these ads have been, these these video content that I've been doing have been very successful. So I had you do the same thing, right? Where your film gets a green screen background and there's a lot of different images switching all the time in the background. Uh, so what we did was we probably, I think we did a new ad, released a new ad every day. So what I would do is I would comb through the news um, every day and look for articles or things that were going on in the news that I could tie back into what we were doing. So for instance, there was an article at the time about um, about uh, millennials having to move back home, right? And I would get the article, I would send you over the concept, and then you were just really good with um, some of my clients I work with, it's like they can't friggin' think or they just don't want to think at all. I could just give you the idea and you're really, really good with coming up with what you need to say off of the rip. Probably the best I've ever worked with in regards to that. So I just, just look for ideas and give you a, a ton of ideas and you would just make the commercials. You would just do, you know, so you make six or seven at a time. So it, what it allowed us to do was... Day one, I released the first ad. Day two, now I have released the second ad, but I have the second and the first. That's called day, ad stacking. Yeah, the, yeah, I call it ad stacking. Right. Um, day three, three, two, and one. Day four, four, three, two, and one. So we're running four different ads at this time. Ex explain to people the the kind of the philosophy behind that. Like you're just because see what happens is. When people start, there's this thing called reactants, right? And as you're scrolling down social media and you're looking at this stuff, your brain is always trying to conserve energy. And um, so the brain is saying, so if, if you're scrolling and the brain thinks that it knows what that particular post is about, it's going to say, keep scrolling. We already know what that's about, right? We want to save our energy just in case we really, really need it. So... If they keep scrolling and then um, for people that run the same ad and try to run, what ends up happening is that people just keep scrolling past because like, all right, they watch it the first time. All right, we already know what he's going to say. So, um, so keep scrolling. But then if we're releasing different ads, it's like the brain's like, hold up. Um, wait, hold on. This looks a little bit different. Let's see what he's going to say, especially, especially with the type of ads that we were running where it was an image of you with the green screen back or the green screen cut out and it, it had a different background or whatever and the backgrounds were always changing so it was engaging and it got people to take a look at the ad a little bit longer right I, um guys i think there's a couple things here that are key and by the way whether you do challenges or not these are strategies that you can use to to get in front of more people yeah. Mark gave me trending topics, and what you have to do is you have to take things that you know people are interested in trending topics that are relevant for the moment, but you have to be able to tie it in to how it affects your audience today, okay? So that's one of the things that you can do. It was a trending topic that allowed anyone to be like, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm a millennial and I'm having to go and live and with my parents. And they created urgency around it. And then you've got to figure out how to tie that in to what it is that you're trying to get people to do. You can do that with not only trending topics, but you can also do that with people that have authority. For instance, if Elon Musk has a certain take on something, you can use that take to be able to then position what it is that you want to position. If, you know, Jeff Bezos has a certain take on something and this person has authority in the marketplace, you can use that to be able to position what it is that you want to position. So it's either a trending topic that's popular or a person, an influencer that's popular, and then you can anchor yourself onto that person and then doing it over and over and over again. Having the backgrounds to where they're different makes people not zone out so it makes it not zone out and how the background is different it wasn't like you were expecting people to 
read anything in the back, right? Yeah, you just you just really want to have some stuff that's related to what you're talking about. And people are just, the, the background is switching so fast that the brain doesn't know what's coming next. So it, it becomes very, it becomes a lot harder for the brain to say skip it because it's like it doesn't know what's coming next, you know. Just to kind of give the people some examples of um, the the things that you were talking about, for instance, like one of them was um, I think at the time there was this article that kind of went viral in the news about a guy that was working at Burger King for like a, a long period of time, and then when he um, he was going to retire or something like that. Um, you know, they didn't give him anything and they might have gave him like a gold, a fake gold seeker. I can't remember what it was, but I remember something with Burger King. So you you started off the ad talking about the 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 actual situation and then you brought and then at, at the very end, you brought so no one thought it was that. They might have just thought that you were just talking, you know, commenting on the situation. But then at the very end, you're like, listen. If you don't want to have to work at Burger King for 25 years and you blah, 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 check out this Invincible Challenge where I'm going to be showing you the techniques I've used over the last six, um, the last eight years to make over $16 million. Right now, another one was, um, uh, I remember it was saying how uh, um, people were having to move because they couldn't afford to live in the area that they were at. And so you talked about that for probably 75% of the ad, I mean, 75% of the um, of the video. And then at the end, listen, if you don't want to have to move from the area that you're in, what you need to do is figure out how to make more money. I'm going to show you how to make more money and in the Invincible Challenge. Right. So it was stuff, stuff like that. I remember there was one where you talked, um, you talked about something that was going on at your daughter's school. That one you had actually came up with or whatever. Oh, no, you said uh, one of your daughter's friends had um, had said, hey, I seen your dad on uh, on my Instagram feed or what, and you talked about that, and then you tied it in. Right, you know? So that's a big thing that you want to do, you guys. You got to figure out how to take something that is not uh, a, a salesy thing and then at the end you can do your silent pitch to whatever it is that you're doing right yeah okay hey, the moment the moment that you make it that the people can tell that it's an ad or you're trying to sell them something is the moment that that finger keeps Starts quite rolling yeah out. right yeah right yeah. okay so we that's what we did from an affiliate standpoint so for those of you that don't know what affiliate is that is where you are partnering with other people that have an audience that could benefit from what you are going to be uh, bringing. And if you partner with them and make it to where they want to push out your challenge uh, as much or more than you do. So can you just talk about a few different things that we were able to do to basically get over 800 registrants from other affiliates and partners? So um, this is the main thing that you have to keep in mind, right? And I don't think a lot of people keep this in mind when they're dealing with affiliates. The, the affiliates, their number one concern is W-I-I-F-M. What's in it for me, right? Yeah. And a lot of times we think that, okay, we're going to get these affiliates and they just want to work hard and bring them they don't give a damn about what you got going on if uh, unless it's there to help them. You know what I'm saying? And um, so, so for one, we had a I think we had a really great affiliate program, right? Um, for two, because we did such a good job with running ads, they kept seeing it over and over again, which motivated them and made them want to come and be a part of what we had going on. We did affiliate trainings where um, where uh, we would share with them strategies for them to be able to um, um, use and 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 help them to make more. So we were helping them to help themselves. You know, uh, we had a really great prize with the top three affiliates. Uh, we took to your mountain home in Georgia. And we would um, strategize with them. 
So it's just a lot of things that we did and really paid a lot of attention to giving the affiliates all, you know, we created, I think, emails for them. We created flyers that they could put up. We made it as easy as possible for them to want to be a part of, of this challenge and, and not just assume that, you know, a lot of people, and this is where they mess up with affiliates, is that they just assume that the affiliates want to help them. Like nobody's concerned about helping you unless it benefits them. You know, they might have whatever else going on in their lives. And 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 it doesn't matter that you may have helped them in their last affiliate launch or whatever, right? None of that matters unless um um it's gonna I mean and, and it's just people, it's just how people are, you know, right. people most people are just, you know, focus on what's in it for them. And um, you have to make it very appealing for the affiliates to want to come in, right? And 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 and, and be a part of what you have going on. That was a big thing that happened with ours. The affiliates, they felt so much of value from even the trainings yeah. that we gave them. The prices and stuff were cool, yeah. but it was like, wow, we were really empowering them and teaching them a new set of skills and different ways that they could. Um, promote the product and not only that like how they can just become better at their own thing they got like their old trains were like this was worth it and then there was almost like of uh, like hey i want to reciprocate some of the value back to them I, right I, they run very engaged with that right. um some of the here here's another thing people ask me uh why five days versus a three-day challenge because a challenge doesn't have to be Five days, you can do a two day, you can do a three day, four day, a five day. Can you give me some of the reasons why you feel like for the people that you worked with, why five days is probably the most ideal or maybe not? I don't know. I'd love to hear your take on it. So um, let's take it back to 1999 or 2000. Okay, right? You're a little college dweeb. <laughs> and someone introduces you to um this young lady named Carrie could you have gone out with her one time and said hey uh we had a great time tonight um on our day you want to marry me she probably would have thought you would have been crazy yeah, right so and so that's so, so, yeah she ran, right? so it's it's kind of like that same concept you know especially if you're going to be selling a higher ticket um price you got to have them t I call it touches you got to have them touches you know and you got to think that, um, and I think that this is an area where a lot of people end up messing up at, right? We were, we had, before the challenge even started, even if it was a brand new person that just came into your world, they might have had four or five touches with you. You were able to touch them four or five times before the challenge even started because we did um, with VIP, we had um, a VIP networking party to the two Sundays before the challenge even started. Right. Right. So they more than likely jumped on those and got an opportunity to experience you and what it is that how you could um, be of value to them. And if they were affiliate as well, they had two more. So they had four touches with you, four physical touches with you. But we're not even including ads or anything else before the challenge started. Sorry. So then now uh, they have every day of the challenge. So that's five more. Then they had the um, the 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 uh, uh, the ones that were in VIP and platinum VIP had had five more with you with the special guests at, uh, for the after sessions. And then on the Saturday we did a the, the, we did the bonus training. Right. So these people probably had about some of the people, and then if you look at the percentage of people that was in VIP and platinum VIP that ended up buying the um the 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 program that you had, they have like fourteen or fifteen touches, aren't you? Right. And I think what what we all must understand is that it takes it takes anywhere between ten to twenty five touch points for someone that is quite familiar with you and trust you to actually say, I'm going to take out my wallet and I'm going to go big. So, uh, so when you even count that in, now you got to think about all the emails because we were sending e right down there almost every day right. and the ads and everything else, man, these people 
probably had like 30 or 40 touches. 30 or 40 touches. And I just know that I really look at like the ones that have been successful, the challenges have been successful and the ones that have it. It really comes down to the amount of touch points and every touch point is different. Yeah. So an email and a text, you guys, like those are, those are like, call that a point, right? So I have this, this scale mark. It's called the ease intimacy scale. Have you ever seen me show this before? Oh. Okay. So the ease intimacy, um, um, intimacy scale is for, on a scale of zero to 10, let's talk about how easy it is to basically do a particular touch point. So with regards to ease, 10, you would consider email and a text, right? Because I could just, I could send it, I could construct an email and I could send that out to a crap ton of people, right? The zero with regards to ease is in person, right? Like you have to drive over here to do this podcast with me, but we're in person. It's awesome, right? And you're going to get so much more connection with us being here, right? Assume is maybe not, um, it, it's, it's, it's easier than in person, but it's definitely not as easy as an email and a text, right? right, right. So that's the ease. But then that whole scale is flipped when it comes to intimacy. There's no intimacy with an email and a text. There's a little bit more intimacy with a DM, or right? But there's more intimacy with a phone call. But there's more intimacy with the Zoom because I can see you. Right. But man, there's nothing like in person. So what people must understand is that not every touch point is created equal. So we could do a lot of emails and texts, which we're doing daily. But then we could, we also like called people mm-hmm. Zoom on the phone, right? We had a team of people that were calling. So that was a little bit more intimacy, right? Not as easy, right? But then when we, when we did the, the group talks before the challenge, that's even better than a phone, right? right? And then as we did the VIPs, which they were every night after, well, that was even more intimate because it wasn't hundreds of people. It was just, you know, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 people mm-hmm. on those. So you guys must understand that touch points are the key. And the more touch points you have, you're giving yourself a well of touch points. points. Yeah. Quality touch points are the key. But the more quality touch points you have, you're increasing the probability that someone is going to go from a prospect to a, a customer. Absolutely. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I mean, I think that it shows in the conversion rates that you had, you know, right. uh, which were incredible. Right, right, right. Right, right. right. So um, any final components to it? Why don't we talk about, you know, the fact that, okay, you know, we were able to capture an audience through great marketing and through great affiliates. We are able to have good content for people throughout the challenge. But then let's talk about like the offer. Like you have to have a good offer in order for people to actually say, okay, like all that information was great. We've seen this a lot. People got great information, but their offer wasn't, wasn't really good. You touch on in the beginning of the podcast by saying, Hey, Jason Fly just said that it's gotta be much, uh, it's gotta be more painful for them to not take action versus taking action. But you help really construct that offer. Can you talk about what was going on like as you were building this, knowing that it was going to be a rock, rock solid offer? So um, I think that the, the, the generic offer, right, you had already come up with. I don't think I helped you that much with it because you know what it was that you were teaching and right? what you wanted to share. Um, I think where I came in at is really building that offer out, right? And what I realized is that the main thing that the the core of the offer, to be honest with you, that's probably the least important, right? Right. Um, I think that, so one of the things that I was able to do was while we had the, um, the, the networking sessions, and the um and the VIP sessions after, right? What I did was, and I don't it, it like I don't know why it just hit me now, but um I was able to 
Uh, I, I sat there, as you were talking, I was listening to what the people were saying, right? right. Listening to um, where their pain points were and, and the things that they felt were holding them back. And as they were talking about the things that they hoped to get from the challenge. And what I did was like, as I'm listening, I'm just writing everything down. Um, Jane, Jane Doe or whatever is saying, yeah, you know, I'm looking, you know, when you ask them, like, what are you trying to get out of this challenge? I'm trying to figure out how I can make sure that um, I don't, I don't know how to, I don't know how to find the, the right product or I don't know. Uh, where my audience is or whatever, right? So I'm writing down every single one of the concerns or um, objections that they have. So then I would make sure to create a bonus for every one of the objections that they have so that when you do present the final offer to them, they're like, wow, he must, he like, this is heaven sent. He, he made this thing specially for me. How did he know what, what I needed? The reason why we knew because you said it and we were paying attention. Right. See, the problem is with a lot of um, marketers or people that are selling their content, they're so caught up in their own crap that they, they're not listening to what the audience is telling them that they need. Right. You know, I was just at an event um, a couple of days ago, right? And um, one of the days we had this um, this speaker that came on at the end of the day. And, and, and he's like a big copywriter or whatever. And he was, and, and when he first started, so keep in mind now, when he came on, the event was supposed to end at five o'clock. He didn't come on till 4.45, right? And then he, he's like joking, he, he's, he's, he's from New York. So he kind of has the New York attitude and charisma. And he's like, yeah, guys, uh, uh, as you can see, he puts his, he didn't have slides. He had his whole document. He's like, my document is like 300 pages and we're going through all this. So we're probably going to be here for an hour. And everybody's like, ah! laughing, right? Because we think he's joking. He wasn't joking. Wow. He was serious, right? And he's there going through the stuff, right? And he's not paying attention to the audience because we're in the audience. Like everybody's like people are leaving out mad people like, yo. An hour, two hours, like we're really only supposed to be there for about another 15 minutes. Like keep in mind, we've been there all day. And and he's just going on and on and on and on. Just as a read and a read. He was not reading. And I was so mad and frustrated because I didn't want to leave because I felt like maybe the moment I left that he was going to say, tell me the winning lottery numbers, right? Yeah. So you don't want to leave and you don't want, really want to be rude. But the two, and I even found myself being disrespectful to him because I, I and, and and I didn't mean it, but 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 I was, I started talking to one of my buddies that was sitting next to him and I'm having a whole conversation and it was really rude and disrespectful, right? But I, I, I think I just, did that because I felt like he was disrespecting us. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think the big thing is that we must understand that it's so disrespectful not to understand your audience. He he he, he did not. I'm watching this guy, and he was he was he wasn't paying attention to what was going on in the world. He was so, and I I almost want to say narcissistic. To, to like, no, I'm giving them all. We're going through the real yeah. document because it doesn't yes. matter as a matter. I've got the greatest stuff ever. I don't care what's happened here. I don't care what's happened. That is like the worst thing you've ever yeah. And I truly believe that's why most people don't make it. It's because they're not listening to their audience. They don't care about what their audience is feeling. They're not understanding. They're not take, like taking a pulse of the current situation and they're not reading the room and it's such a lack of disrespect it is to your audience to your to your audience you know and i mean i know because i heard like once i left like everybody was saying the same thing outside it can i tell you what i would have done uh -huh. what i would have done is i would have talked about the elephant in the room yeah i would have said guys i know you all have been here and you've been here all day, and I know you all are extremely tired. The information that I wanted to bring to you all, I believe, is extremely valuable. 
So, guys, here's what I want to do. In respect of the most valuable resource to them, your time, what I want to do is I want to spend the next 15, 20 minutes on a half of you guys. My presentation is going to be about an hour. I want to spend the next 15, 20 minutes on a half of you guys, and I want to give you some of the key things that I think you all can take away from right now. For anybody that wants to talk to me after, then what we can do is just let me know, and I'll stay as long as you all want me to stay. Or if you all have a pressing need and you have to go, you have flight to catch, you have this, just do me a favor, reach out to me, and I'll go ahead and I'll put my number up on the screen or here's my email, and I'll send you over everything. So I don't think the organizer of that would have been upset with that. Just respecting the audience. You would have gotten a whole bunch of contacts, which would give me a bunch of conversations that you can, you can, you know, I'll build off of. You would have won everybody over because you've read the room. And then for the ones that wanted more, you would have basically had the hot people stay with you. Absolutely. That's how I mean, he, he did it. Not him. Right. Not him. Yeah, yeah. He was, you know, to the point where, um, the, the organizer of the event, I saw when he walked up to, he went to the AV guy and gave the AV guy a note to, um, to, to, to bring to him on the stage right. because this dude had no plans to, to stop. stop. Yeah. Crazy. And you could tell like he, he literally had no plans and every time he thought he was going to stop. All right, done with that. But all right, next point. Yeah. And and oh. he was a he was a bro, bro, and bro, I went bro. so I went to the promoter and I kind of cracked the joke. I was like, man, you should have you should have told us to bring our pajamas and I could have had a pajama party. Yeah. And he laughed. He was like, yeah, I know, right? And he and he laughed. And, and everyone I talked to was was basically saying the same thing that this dude wasn't um um had no plans. And and, and the whole reason I'm gonna tell you this that whole story. Is just how like some people are so they're they're not concerned with the audience at all, and it's just like this is what you need to learn, and I'm going to give it to you, and you're going to take all of it in the way that I think that you need to learn it. And I think that the 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 uh the strategy that we took was different. We listened to to the concerns that the people had and built. The course the built the offering, even though the core offer was still the same that what you had, right? Mm -hmm. But we built the bonuses and everything around what the people needed, mm -hmm. and that's why it converted so well. It co converted better than anything I've ever seen. Yeah, you guys, I hope you take everything that we've talked about and you understand that, even though I truly believe that many of you could create a challenge and it could bring you and generate you the amount of income that it would take for you to do it a year traditionally. And you could do this in five days. You really could. But if you take everything that was said on today's episode, especially what was just said, and you actually listen to your audience, you will be able to not only use this doing challenges, you'll be able to do this in anything that you do. You must understand your audience. You must respect them. You must respect their needs, their wants, their desires, their problems, their pains, their frustrations, and create solutions around that. And let your ego go. Just let it go and stop thinking that you're the greatest thing since sliced bread. If you do that, you're going to win. So with that said, let's wrap it up. Um, thank you so much. There's so much more that you have. That Is there a way that people can get access to some of the other things that you gave them with the challenge. Is there uh yeah, they could um, message me on Instagram. And then I also have a group where I did a um, case study on the challenge. Okay. And um, a lot of the things that we put in the challenge, um, I, I talked about in the case study. And if they join my Telegram group and they could go to we are marketers, W E A R E. M A R K E T E R S dot C O. They could join the Telegram group, and I have the um, case study that I put in there where I break everything down. Like I legit could probably sell that case study for about five hundred dollars because it's probably one of the most thorough teachings on challenges mm -hmm. that um, that I've done. 
and they can get it free just from joining the group. Okay, so what I'll do, you guys, is we are marketers at CEO. What I'll do is I'll put it in the description and the show notes uh, for you to be able to join that group and get access to all the things that we did. So thank you, Mark, for being on the podcast. Absolutely, my pleasure. All right.